Okay, the meeting is recorded. All right, okay. I think everyone is in. Thank you very much for coming uh, to the uh, Urban Forestry Commission meeting. It's been a little while since we last met. So we have a lot to talk about today. So let me just, uh, first uh, item on the agenda is uh, public comment. We have multiple people from the public here. Um, is anyone interested in making public comment? Do you want me to time keep, Rich? Sure, that'd be great. If you don't mind, that'd be very yep. helpful. I can do it. Yep. No public comment. Hello. Unmute yourself. There you go. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, it's Virginia Sullivan, 23 Dryads Green. Thank you for this meeting. And I just want to say that um, moving in this direction, trying to um, incorporate as many trees and as much greenery and as much um, climate mitigation and um, comfortable spaces for people in downtown is such a good direction to go. And I think there's a lot of support in the community and I appreciate your being willing to listen to the um, details of the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else like to make a public comment? Madeline. Hello. My name is Madeline Lombard. I'm a Northampton resident. I live on, on Elm Street. Um, I'm a lifelong Northampton resident and a botany student at UMass. You know me from my work with TreeSpeak. I'm a young person who loves our downtown and is deeply concerned about our climate crisis. I know we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to redesign our main street to prepare for a zero carbon, hotter and more stormy future. Planting a continuous canopy of a large, healthy shade trees must be an integral part of this redesign. I hope you will advocate fiercely for that and not back down in the face of excuses to keep space for cars on Main Street where trees should go. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, David. All right, is there anyone else who'd like to make public comment? Um, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, yeah, right there. Um, probably I sent, I just recently sent you the minutes for our last meeting. Uh, so if you would like to take a few minutes to read them, that would be fantastic. Please.
I'm good. I yeah, I don't know if people want to are chiming in. Anyone else need more time for for reading minutes? Rob, Marilyn. Okay. Um, could I have a motion uh, to accept the minutes as presented? Molly, thank you. Uh, we have a. I second the motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Thanks, Rob. All Thanks. right. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry, is everyone unmuted? That's uh, Marilyn. Right. Yep, Marilyn. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Um, so a, mo a motion was made and seconded. Um, any discussion? Barring no discussion, um, Deb, you call a roll call vote, please. Gladly. Thank you. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Thank you. Rob? Yes. Thank you. Marilyn? Yes. Thank you. Molly? Yes. Thank you. Jen? Yep. And David? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, chair report. So, we, it's been a month since we've met. Um, I think that quite a few things have happened. I mean, the, the most pressing thing that I've had to deal with as a tree warden is we had a public shade tree hearing on May 18th, 2021, on Glendale Road, which I had mentioned in our previous meetings. It was finally scheduled and held to remove a four and a half inch um, red maple, four and a half inch DBH red maple. Um, there were no objections. Uh, the individual is going to uh, replace the trees uh, according to our um, mitigation scale or replacement scale. So it's uh, the hearing was held to replace, uh, or actually to construct a new driveway for a multi um, uh, multi unit development called a wagon clusters development. Um, I've had. Um, I did actually speak to, uh, which we'll talk about later in the meeting, I did speak to uh, tool design today regarding the trees on Main Street um, and their existing condition and answered some of the questions they had. And I will be actually working with them um, in my capacity as a tree warden in the next couple of weeks to look at the existing trees that are on Main Street. But we can talk about that later on. Um, and other than that, I really don't have, I don't have a lot to report. Um, we've just been running normal operations doing tree work and cemetery maintenance, park maintenance. Um, so I would actually like to, to move the meeting along. I'd like to actually have David, if he's, if, David, if you could um, kind of talk about uh, the summer intern, which is Kaylee, which has joined us, which I will get her. Um, I also, in the packet that I sent all of you folks, I, I did send you some of the, the draft ta tasks that, uh, David actually had submitted to the to me and I wanted to forward them to you to take a look at so we could discuss at this meeting. So David, if you would like to. Sure, well, uh, I'll uh, introduce Kaylee uh, and welcome you to the, uh, the UFC. So I guess you, you uh, why don't you just, if you wouldn't mind, just tell the, uh, the commission a bit about uh, uh, your interest in trees, environmentalism, you know, where you, I think you, you go to George Washington University, so. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Kaylee. I'm currently in Franklin, Massachusetts, where I've grown up in, and then I attend George Washington University. I'm a rising sophomore, and I'm double majoring in environmental and sustainability science and public health. And I think just as a young person, um, obviously the climate crisis is something that's always in my mind, and so I wanted to do something with um, my academic interest to really like fulfill that, um, to really just get involved in any way I can. And I know there's like a bunch of uh, work that needs to be done from like the science spectrum to the policy spectrum. And so for uh, academically, I'm more focused in science, but I saw this internship um, and I know the details, it was about, like talking about the importance of like the ecosystem services of trees. And it really aligned with something I was actually discussing in one of my geography classes. So. I'm really excited to work with everybody uh, this summer. Thank you. We're happy to have you. 
Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Uh, so, so uh, Sue, would you like to talk about the um, the uh, we Kaylee? We talked about four potential initiatives you might start with, um, and the first one is sort of a calendaring um, exercise that would uh, that would help the commission members keep abreast of what's happening at other agencies within the city. Um, but Sue, do you want to talk more about what one that? Thought well, one thought that we talked about a little bit at a couple of different meetings was um, at least keeping track of the agendas of what's coming up on the different committees, subcommittees, commissions in the city. So um, for instance, going through those and looking for anything that has that relates to trees or the significant tree ordinance to bring us more in line and you know raise our awareness of what's going on because there are an awful lot of people doing a lot of work throughout the city and there are a lot of bodies meeting and community groups and um it's fractured in some ways often certainly we don't always hear about things until maybe we read it in the paper and then come back to the full commission and um just to kind of move us along in that way how to connect our community better and so that we pick up on tree issues as early as we can without, um, we're unable to attend all of these meetings and we've begun trying to attend more of them. Um, maybe figure out a system where people sign up to attend one a month or something, even that would give us a little bit more connection. But we yeah. can certainly meet and talk more about it. Be happy to. Yeah, I'd be happy to meet with you too. David, did you want to talk about maybe having um, more outreach materials that are accessible that more of us could use at this point? We have um, Rich and Rob have developed a really nice program that they've given publicly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was another discussion. Uh, so uh, Rich and Rob, who are who are here on this on this call, they uh, they put together a really nice, uh, basically educational presentation using, uh, Rob, I don't know what it was, a PowerPoint or yeah, some, some variation on that. Rich but the idea would be to kind of build a bunch of educational presentations modeled on their work about the value of trees. But maybe Rob, you can talk more about sort of how long your presentation was and how you did it. And right, so the presentation was, Although I was a participant, it was really organized by Rich. He, and he has multiple presentations, longer and shorter ones, which I have participated in. Um, I think that having it be, it, finding a way of having it presented uh, by other than Rich would probably have some value. I mean, Rich has figured out how to do it himself. Um, because we might be able to reach a greater audience, which is not, um, his time is not unlimited. Um, and we do have ambition to, uh, the president to, to, to further communicate what we're doing and what we're trying to do here in Northampton. We think it's valuable beyond our immediate community even. And uh, that, that's something we got started on, Rich and I, and we actually went to, um, I went to one other community with him and Rich has been to multiple ones. Uh, so we might, we might work on that. It would involve some effort on Rich's part too, I think, mm -hmm. to do it. But we might be able to just take what he has and work on it. Can I jump in with two little points? Yeah. One is that um, the Abundance Farm presentation that I, I um, went to it was a wonderful presentation and it's resulted in a lot of good things. So it's a good, it demonstrates how powerful even one presentation is in that we have new volunteers and we had um, two volunteers who organized their neighborhoods step up and um, offer to be mentors to other neighborhoods who wanna organize. So those are really good. And another thing um, that came out of Arbor Day was um, David Starr, um, 
local activists, environmental activists, has been revitalizing the Northampton Kiwanis Club. And they're looking for speakers and they would love to have us, someone from the commission at some point. Um, so maybe we can, I can talk to Rich about, you know, what would make sense timing and if he's comfortable with other someone else doing it or, um, and how we can pull together and, and do that. So just in support of presenting to them, in the end, in order to really be successful with the tree program, we need to bring on as many people as possible to be both aware and also to help because uh, just very simply, we want to plant trees in their front yards, for instance, and we want people to uh, care for the trees and not park on them with their tires. I mean, there, there's so many places where community uh, help, uh, we would like them to water some of the trees. We'd like them, we would like them to uh, advocate for trees, which is something that's really come up just today. I mean, it's on the agenda today. And to do that, we, we have to constantly bring trees up as an issue in the community and with community groups. So yeah, it would be good to have better, more, more outreach. I mean, I think we have, Rich has done great outreach and I've participated with him, but, uh, you know, spread it, make, making, a, making it easier for all of us to access a way of presenting to the greater community would be really, really good. Uh, so I, I expect you're getting a sense of this, but I think um, some kind of a presentation on the right of way in Northampton would be really helpful uh, because uh, the city is entitled to plant trees in the right of way, but many people, many citizens don't know where the right of way starts or ends. And, uh, and that's just one sort of technical uh, presentation, but then there's like the stormwater mitigation value of trees and their cooling effect. Uh, there are lots of, and I'm sure Marilyn and Molly can chime in on subjects that really ought to be pushed out into the community more than, than we're doing. Uh, David, do you want to talk a little bit about the goal of, of pollinate Northampton and what we'd like to? Sure, uh, if anybody knows more about this than I do, chime in, but I, so I, the, the city of Northampton has, um, has supported a, a kind of a, the goal of uh, assisting homeowners who want to support pollinators basically by, by um, planting native shrubs and trees. Um, and they've done this by partnering with a nursery in Cummington called Wing and a Prayer. And they put together a kit um, which is, I don't know, 32 plugs or something like that, that uh, any homeowner can buy for less than $100. And, uh, and they've, the, uh, the city and the nursery, they've worked out the details of the kits as they relate to annuals and perennials and shrubs, but I don't think they've put together like a tree kit or a tree and shrub kit. So the goal there would be to kind of work with the city of Northampton um, uh, as part of this initiative and in conjunction with Rich and the latest thinking about what kind of uh, urban street trees are best from a pollinator perspective. There was a meeting with Tree Northampton and the Western Mass pollinators and it was very fruitful learning more about trees that are so important like willows or different trees and we were exchanging our planting lists and um that was that was a nice direction this this is a this building on that sounds like yeah getting the getting these two very caring groups to work together pollinators and trees and then the Final idea is uh, it's a, it, we're fortunate that we have Lily um, and her daughter Madeline on the call. But uh, Lily organized a great biking tour to a bunch of significant trees around the city uh, two years ago, and I think that that's something that 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 we should be doing every year. Um, 
and uh, but it uh, so and it's kind of a fun project. Uh, so that would be a fourth initiative that I, I would point to. Yeah, those all sound like things I would definitely be interested in working on. I know for me, um, like reaching out and like people, especially on like the importance of trees or honestly just like anything environmental issues related is something that I've always like, I'm always excited to do. Great. So I, I think uh, what I, I will, I'll need to do uh, for some housekeeping is Kaylee, I will probably call you tomorrow you're available, uh, you give me the contact information, and then we can kind of go over some of the um, things we talked about today, but also some ground rules and try to figure out how we're gonna uh, just kind of all work together. Cause I know you are, you have a time frame. Um, I also need to get an acceptance letter put together and sent to you as well. I just have to have the director of public works approve it. Um, and then there's some other housekeeping um, issues because you're um, a volunteer. So there's uh, some forms that you have to fill out. But, other than that, um, I'm, I am more than happy to start working with you on any one of these items and any one of the other commissioners, um, any one of the commissioners who are interested in also lending a hand, that would be fantastic too, because as Rob has alluded, my time is not limitless. So, although I, I pretend it is, but it's really not. So, um, yes, Molly. About how many hours a week are you available, Kaylee? Um, I've planned, like, I don't have much going on. Um, so pretty much I'm free for every day of the week. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, is it Rich who would be your supervisor directly or or David or Sue? Has that been worked out? I'm not sure on that yet. No, 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 it hasn't. And that's one of the things that I think you probably ought to discuss because I, I won't be able to be able to be everywhere, I guess, in essence. So I think once I, Kaylee and I have a conversation tomorrow, I will reach all back out to you by email. Um, and then uh, we can just respond one at a time if I have questions or whatever, but we can actually, so we can, we can start to utilize her time because I know the, the clock is now ticking basically and for her, so, and for us really. So, that's okay with everyone, unless someone else has a different suggestion. How long are you available for Kaylee? When do you go back to school? Uh, I go back the 22nd, um, and then I think the week before I'll be away. But um, yeah, so I think- 22nd maybe. of August? Yeah, of August, yeah, okay. August. Okay. So you'll send Kaylee's email address to us, Rich, once yes. everything is sorted out? Yes, I will send you all the contact information keep you posted as to what we talk about in tomorrow's conversation. Um, um, this yes, is Rob. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, Kaylee, uh, I help organize the tree planting and tree care. And so we're out there all the time. And I don't, it's not uh, something you need, you have to do, but if you want to come out and work with the crews that do tree care, it's fun. You get to actually see the trees that we're planting and kind of the circumstances on conditions on the street. Uh, we do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays in the morning. Okay. That's just something you can, if you have time and want to come out. We also have a volunteer, Maya, who put together a tree benefits poster for um, Arbor Day, a lovely poster. Unfortunately, it was raining and well, actually it was, it wasn't raining. It was super duper windy. Mm. So we weren't able to really um, have it out much. But um, she put a lot of thought into that. She also, she came to our commission and did a presentation on carbon. She might have some resources that could save you time and energy. And we have another volunteer, Alicia, who is a graphic artist who's helped a lot. And she has a, a great collection of photographs and so forth. So there's other people too, who we, who we can draw on to help you reach your, you know, so to have nice measurable outcomes at the end of this. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have any questions for Kaylee or any other comments before we move on to the next topic? One, one suggestion would just be um, for our summer meetings, perhaps an agenda item could just be Kaylee reporting out on 
on what she's been doing and asking any questions, getting any group advice. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's good. I like that. It's a good thought. That would be helpful. And then Kaylee can also keep us updated via email as well. So we, so we are obviously a public body, so we can, you can send us all emails, um, but all of us can't reply all. So individuals can respond to you. I can respond to you. Sue can respond to you individually, but we cannot do reply all. So feel free to email all of us, but you'll probably only get one or two responses from one individual. Uh, one okay. Individual, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. So Kaylee, I will be in touch with you tomorrow morning. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And by the way, you can stick around. You, yes. Yeah, feel free. Please to do. For the duration of this meeting. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> All right. Uh, our next agenda item is uh, Main Street redesign. Uh, and we have Lily Lombard as, a, as a, uh, a familiar face and a guest today, but a guest speaker. So, um, Everybody. Lily, are you going to need to have screen share? Yes, please. Okay, good to see everybody. Um, Kaylee, uh, on behalf of an ordinary citizen in Northampton who cares about trees and who used to sit on the tree commission, so great to see a young person jumping in. That's wonderful. Um, I also wanted to say uh, that my good friend and neighbor, Kira Anderson is here and she and I were the great beneficiaries of the neighborhood tree planting project. Um, and we have 40 new trees in our neighborhood Wow. Thanks to uh, the city of Northampton, Rich's special um, logistic organizing and volunteers like Madeline and Kara and dozens of other neighbors. So it was a great, that was a great successful project and we're so grateful that we were selected to be part of it. Um, okay, so my, uh, my goal today is to introduce you all to this uh, very quickly mobilizing group called Main Street for Everyone and to explain what the strong intersection with what we're doing is with trees and to energize you all to take some very specific action um, in support of the most verdant, shady, you know, inviting Main Street that we can imagine. So um, Kaylee, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. Northampton is going through this great redesign process of its Main Street. Um, the main street in Northampton is one of the widest and most dangerous in the state, and it was deemed um, <clears throat> a target for uh, reconstruction to help to mitigate some of those safety issues. And in so doing, it's a great opportunity to look at all of the ways we can improve Main Street, um, especially in the face of our climate emergency, um, in the face of changing economic times, and um, and also just in our like um, cultural this cultural point we are in history with um, a great awareness about inclusivity, equity, and inclusion. So um, the city has gone through a design process during a really odd time, which is a year of pandemic. And so people's engagement with the process was really intermittent. And um, there was a pop out roll uh, rollout that was very poorly received during the pandemic and led to a lot of reactionary response from the business community in downtown around parking. And that very much colored what the city presented to us as its design alternatives. There were uh, essentially three design alternatives. Um, and when they had the latest public forum um, rolling out these design options, some of us left there going, God, we don't really love any of them. Um, there's one that we hate less than the others, but there's none that we love and we have a once in a generation opportunity here to, to transform our downtown and how can we pass this up? So we quickly organized, we formed the group Main Street for Everyone. And, um, and we've been kind of pedal to the metal nonstop trying to build momentum around this movement. So I'm gonna share my screen for a second. Um, By the way, Lily, yes. your, when I clicked on your links to your website, it didn't open. Okay, well, I don't know if that's your browser, Mar uh, Marilyn, or maybe I, um, I put the wrong link in, but it's simply, and you can see my cursor here, Main Street, the number four, everyone.org. Yeah, I typed it in, it didn't open, but anyway, good to it's see it right now. It's probably a, a browser issue then, Marilyn. Um, 
Okay, so this is this is our website, and I just want to take you through a little bit of who we are. So we're a grassroots group of Northampton residents who value our downtown as a great public space and who recognize our climate emergency for urban, urban planning professionals, downtown business owners, landscape designers, I should say tree lovers, because we are a lot of us, climate youth and disability advocates and clean transportation groups, um, including Mass Bike and Friends of Northampton Trails. And I really do give uh, individuals in those organizations credit for launching this, this campaign. Uh, and uh, what we have done over the last four weeks is we've come up with a series of, of um, design recommendations. And I wanna go through all of them with you, but I, I obviously wanna focus you more, more intently on the trees. So our design recommendations are, and I, I'm sure all of you have looked at, at the design alternative number three, although I am gonna flash it up for a second but it is to shrink the motorist footprint to gain space for people and green infrastructure. <clears throat> and that includes replacing all on-street angle parking with targeted parallel parking that is really um, uh, focused on three areas, loading zones, handicap parking, and 15 minute parking for those people who wanna get in and get out very quickly to, um, to do something like carry out. And then ensure that visitors arriving by car are efficiently directed to underutilized parking garages with smart technology. We know that the times are changing very, very quickly and people are going to have an easier time arriving into a town knowing exactly where the parking spots are and going to them instead of circling around and wasting time and feeling frustrated that they can't find a spot in, in <clears throat> main, on Main Street. We also don't want most people to park on Main Street uh, because we want them to um, pass by several shops and restaurants before they go to their ultimate destination. Most people have that capacity. And then um, instead of a, um, a third, what they call a third lane, which is really um, introducing a, a continuous center lane through downtown, we want to incorporate left turn pockets as needed on Main Street um, so that we can, in each case where it's not needed, we can just capture a little bit more of that public realm for people instead of for cars. And then the other part, the main part, is to create a continuous shade tree canopy that forms a protective and beautiful street edge. So, you know, the emphasis is on protection. So you all, I don't need to tell you this, having um, street trees lined up on the edge of a street creates um, a visual sense of calm and definition of the street line. Um, it also protects you from um, wind, storms, uh, air pollution, uh, noise, and then it, it just is beautiful. I mean, we all know what a beautiful, um, what a, a fully mature tree-lined street looks like, and we always gravitate there, there when we go to cities, when we visit cities. So um, in order to do that, we, we recognize two things. One is that we need to modernize the substrate and that is structural soil underneath the entirety of, from the bike lane to the um, facade of the, the, the storefront and paving. So that could be where, there's, where there is parking, have some kind of permeable paving. So those trees have a chance to, to hydrate. Uh, and we want large uh, urban tolerant trees. And then, there, and then the other thing is um, select ex the right species and the right sites for the maximum beauty, edge effect, and tree health. Okay, so that's our design recommendations. And when I, um, I just want to show you what this looks like uh, on the ground. So what we're looking at on the left is the current, uh, a, a little snapshot of a part of alternative three redesign. Um, so I'm going to point my cursor here. So let's just take this part um, west of Gothic Street, <clears throat> where here you have angle parking, and um, and and we have also a full continuous center lane. So if we remove that angle parking and turn it into parallel parking, you've already captured more pedestrian space. And then if you further where you don't need, here you need a, a turn lane. You need, you need a, a, a turn pocket to turn left on Gothic Street. We recognize that. But up here, you really don't. 
you could have just two lanes here. So you've then further bumped out this spot here. You've bumped it out further. You've reduced this the crosswalk length the, to make it safe for pedestrians. And you have more room for trees. And of course, if you did this, then you probably wouldn't keep the bike lane right here. You'd probably move it out, you know, so that you could fit more trees in here. So that just gives you a small snapshot of what those recommendations manifest. And here on the other side, you can see that you've gained all this space where you, and, and this is where um, Urban Outfitters is, the, um, First Churches. So here you've practically created like a park-like um, presence for a lot more pedestrian space. Okay, so as it relates specifically to trees, um, let's see what it looks like in photograph form. So this is a downtown, I think this is like uh, West Hartford, Connecticut, where they do have this very, very defined um, street edge uh, with trees. And you see how protective that feels, how the people feel fully separated from the other side of the street. So the definition is very distinct. And, um, and you can actually, so people can enjoy full shade here, but actually you can, you can, you can be out in, in light rain too and not feel it. So it's, it's an amazing protective thing. And then this is, I've, you all have seen this before, excuse me. This is, uh, this is downtown Greenville, South Carolina, where in the 1970s, they um, had the, the foresight to expand their space, their pedestrian space, and make room for really big trees. So these trees are actually willow oaks, and they were planted, uh, you know, going on 50 years ago. But willow oaks are actually very fast-growing oaks. Um, and so in very short time, they had full canopies extending over the entire street. And, and you know what that is like in terms of storm mitigation. It's profound. And um, Greenville, South Carolina, the mayor there describes their street, their downtown, uh, sorry, the trees in their downtown as their single greatest asset. So uh, to do that, again, this is just a, a diagram and this was in the recommendations that, that you as a tree commission a year ago submitted officially to uh, the, er, the planning department when they were first soliciting input about the main street redesign. So this involves putting a substrate here of structural soil from the facade all the way to the bike path. So those trees have just plenty of space for the roots to grow, for air pockets to remain, um, for them to not face the, comp the compaction of an urban environment. And then um, what, what I have noticed upon real close study of alternative three is that it is lacking um, some significant places where trees just don't, aren't part of the plan. So um, th this is an example of one. And I was actually standing down uh, at this spot today for a photo op for the Gazette because the Gazette is covering um, the emergence of this group. And we were standing right here in front of the Academy of Music broiling in the sun. And we we're looking across the street to um, Edwards Church, which is right here completely treeless. We're looking over here to uh, in front of what, whatever this building is, the old high school. And, you know, no trees here. And I realize there are select trees um, represented as to be planted in these spots, but there's nothing over here. And, um, and if you look at a few other, I'm just gonna pull up the full alternative three map. It might just take a second. Here we go. So I was just pointing to this area right here. There's no plan for trees here. And then if you look at other parts of alternative three in front of City Hall, right here. Sorry, is that? No, City Hall's right here. City Hall and in front of um, like uh, the UU Memorial Hall, no plans for trees here. No tr plans for trees here and the busiest crosswalk of all of downtown. And then if you go all the way down here, which is where Local Burger is, I'm gonna try to slide this down where local burger is, um, there are no plans for trees here. So what this requires is a, a, um, a set of sharp eyes, uh, noticing this and making sure that the design 
includes if you you know if you feel this is important and certainly a lot of citizens do the good news is that on that that survey that people did of the various alternatives the um the feature that was selected above all as being high priority was trees, new trees. So I feel like you have the, the public support behind you to really push for like right here where local burger is. Well, that's a very challenging little narrow pedestrian space. And really the only way you're going to um, fit trees in there is to take away at least a par one parking space. And this is, this is where, um, we're calling upon you as a tree commission to remind the city that um, this is what the public wills. The public wills trees over uh, parking in downtown and especially in targeted places where there is a heat island effect. So my request of, of, of the Urban Forestry Commission is first of all, I'd love, I'd love to just um, you know get your feedback about what you what you think are are um, what direction we're going in and whether you think we're on the right track, and um, whether you'd be willing to, uh, as a commission, form some kind of an official statement calling for design features that um, that support a continuous canopy of trees along the entirety of Main Street as, as much as possible. And when we say possible, remember when they say, well, there's no room for it. Well, there's room for three lanes of cars and parking on either side. So it's a matter of priorities. And, and you know, you are the voice of let's, let's um, hold up this priority. So a continuous canopy along the entirety of Main Street with sufficient space and sufficient infrastructure to support its health. And then um, that that canopy be right along the street edge, as opposed to trying to um, trying to save the, the trees that are there now that will, A, <laughs> that have a short life anyway, because they're currently living in um, really strained um, environment. B, will suffer from probably uh, construction damage. And C, don't have structural soil to support them. So we certainly want in the future, every single tree to have the advantage while we have that street open to have um, this very essential infrastructure developed. Uh, the only th other thing I wanted to end with is that um, our team, our design team made a presentation this morning to the bike ped committee and it was an excellent presentation. I only showed you a small part of the slides that they made, but they had, we had 30 people in attendance, including several um, elected, uh, elected officials and candidates, uh, our state representative, Lindsay Sabadosa, Gina Louise Sciara, Alex Jarrett, uh, Marissa Elkins, who's running for at-large council position. Um, <clears throat> and we had pretty much unanimous uh, support for the design elements that we are um, pushing for from the bike ped committee. Tool design, as Rich mentioned, they're the consulting firm that is, <clears throat> that is uh, shepherding this redesign project. They were very receptive, much more than I thought. Um, and it, I, I left feeling hopeful and I feel like we are building that, we are, first of all, we are reconstructing the narrative that this is, this is about saving parking. We are rewriting the narrative and we are building public momentum toward a really future oriented design. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking. Um, I'd love to take any questions and, I'm, and I'd love to just hear your reaction to my proposal that you write a letter in support of um, improving alternative three to support a full continuous canopy along Main Street. Thank you. Thank I'm gonna you. stop sharing. Thank you, Lily. Um, does anyone uh, have questions for Lily? I have a question. Um, be, with um, just tool designs now, uh, did they, are they using traditional tree pits in there, in the original design? You know what I mean? The number three? 
I mean, they would, what they would say to that is that that's probably a beyond 25% design question. So they, I don't believe they've addressed it. Um, uh, and I, I don't think, I don't have any reason to believe that they would be um, adverse to structural soil. Mm -hmm. I love your presentation and your suggestion, Lily. Very uh, thoughtful and uh, well articulated and compelling. Um, I, I agree with your suggestion for us to craft a proposal to expand on three to include these things, the continuous canopy all along Main Street with the sufficient space and infrastructure. Um, I'm, I'm curious about the, the timing. Uh, how much time do we have to get our voice and our, our, um, our points made and considered? I don't have a crystal ball on that. I mean, Tool says that that the lines of communications continue to be open, but every, but momentum is uh, culminating at at this June twenty fourth public forum. That's the next picture Main, Main Street forum where they plan to roll out their um, official endorsement of whatever design. I mean, they've you know the mayor has made his press release that they are supporting alternative three, but now just just days after that, we've come out with our very strong movement. So I, I know that the city is receptive to hearing from us. Um, I, I feel like we are being taken um, seriously and I feel like you will be taken seriously. What I would advise you to do it is at the very latest before the June 24th forum. Um, my recommendation would be to do it right away. Yeah, I understand urgency is important. I was just wondering, um, is, there, is there a particular deadline by which a decision will be made and, and then plans uh, beginning to be implemented? Uh, you know, I could also um, turn to, to Rich for this, but my understanding is that they hope to have a 25% a design that the city that they can demonstrate to mass department of transportation that the city is fully like that there is consensus around by the end of the year having said that i feel like um this june 24th forum marks a really important moment um and if there is um and if it looks like you know the city is ho will hold fast to alternative three um then well, let me put it another way. In, in order for this city not to hold fast to alternative three, now is the time before the 24th to voice that those, you know, objections or recommendations for improvement. I, I have a question around the recommendations. I, I, I could see very carefully at uh, Edwards Church and at the uh, burger place that there are trees that aren't there, you know, and that we could take a parking place out. I, I don't know, maybe you already showed it or it's on the line somewhere, but it, did, did you articulate or has anyone articulated a, a, a alternative plan for improving the entire Main Street or, is, or are we looking to, to have someone do that? And that's the request. Yes. Yes, we're looking, we're, we're, we are making a series of recommendations to tool who are, you know, professionally hired to do this work. And it would be both um, somewhat redundant and counterproductive to, to go into that level of detail ourselves. And also we're a bunch of volunteers. We just don't have the time. <laughs> um, so I think it makes a lot more sense that we, we ask tool, and this was one of my, um, I'm, I'm just, let me just pull back. Am I still on screen share? I'm not. Yeah, no, you're a co-host. You're co yeah. Okay, let me, uh, let me, um, I'll pull up one more, one slide then. <clears throat> so back to this slide, um, when I, I presented the, the tree component of the, of the presentation this morning to Tool. 
And what I asked them to do was to identify and address all the current hotspots in the current design. So all those places where they have not either um, planned to have new trees or they, or they actually ha show existing trees standing, which kind of makes no sense because those trees, again, will ver be very unlikely to survive this construction project. So the two things that I said is please address and identify the hotspots and presume, just presume, it may not be the case, but just presume that 100% of the existing trees will not be there. Um, and by doing that, you can really plan a new street edge that, that creates this 100% continuous canopy. So it, does that answer your question, Rob? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Now, I just thought maybe I was missing and hadn't really understood that an alternative plan, it's, it's a request to make an alternative plan that's more comprehensive in terms of uh, trees and also space, I think, for pedestrians. Yes, yes it is. And, 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 and it would, it's specific on a few points in that it's asking to make left turn pockets instead of left turn lane. Um, a couple of, a couple the of- The angle parking versus the parallel parking is the other really specific. So you're, you're, you're preferring the angle parking over the, no. No, no it's parallel. not. Yeah, parallel parking, if, if we were to sh shift from angle to parallel, we'd pick up, uh, Rich, correct me if I'm wrong here, probably 10 feet of, of public space to pedestrians. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. I just wanted to be, I wanted to understand what we're yeah. asking. Um, you know, and the other thing that I feel like we've, we've really got behind us is we've got great data. And we, the presentation we gave this morning was completely data-driven. We had this meta-analysis of 23 studies all around North America that demonstrate that communities, cities, that create greater amount of bi bicycle pedestrian uh, infrastructure in exchange for parking, when they actually lose parking, actually create either um, positive economic you know, uh, results or neutral. And that in very, very few cases, and there's often confounding um, influences on those, does it actually create a negative impact on the economy? So that's, that's the first one. And of course, trees you know, have been well demonstrated. A, a treescapes um, uh, boulevard is well documented as, as increasing economic activity in, in retail um, zones. So um, there's a lot of data. And then there's data around the safety of angle parking versus parallel parking. Angle parking is, as you know, if you've ever pulled out of an angle parking spot in Northampton, it's a blind experience. <laughs> and it creates um, you know, collision uh, uh, incidences. So this is, the, uh, for all these reasons, I feel like we're making a compelling data-driven argument for, and then of course, there's the issue of climate change which is urgent and real and um, you know, happening at such breakneck speed. So for all these reasons, we feel just incredibly passionate about this and are looking for allies everywhere. We just heard from the Youth Commission that they are going to take it up in their agenda and, um, and make, uh, uh, make a statement about it. And we are looking to all the, all the commissions. Um, there's a couple others where we, obviously the bike ped is one transportation and parking we haven't gone to yet, but we're, we're hitting them all. Lily, I have a practical question. Um, as one who commutes to work through downtown Northampton, which is the bulk of my commute time, just getting through that narrow um, section between South Street and um, Holly. Um, one practical question I have is, one, one advantage of angle parking is you can just zip right in. Um, if people are parallel parking, you know, you have to sort of pull forward and back. And, and I'm just wondering if any of the studies took that into consideration. I mean, I'm all in favor of everything that yeah. you said, but I'm just wondering what kind of traffic snarls might occur if there's one lane of traffic and people are trying to parallel park Again, if you look at the at the studies that are done in cities who have made these changes all, all around North America, you're, you'll see that the the increase in time it takes to get from point A to point B is 
minimal to nominal. So um, I, I, you know, people have these anecdotal impressions and they, and they inflate them to the point where like that one incident is, does describe their, their whole experience. But when you actually do, do the science and do this, the, you know, the studies of, of traffic timing through towns, you find that it has very little impact. Uh, just a quick note, we're about uh, almost 10 minutes uh, over the agenda. And I just wanna say one quick thing is thank you so much for uh, doing all this work. And um, it's incredibly thorough and well thought out. I really appreciate it. And um, just really appreciate the forcefulness of the, um, see the structural soil because there's just no way trees are gonna make it after a reconstruct and we'll never have large trees without that. And, um, and that I agree with Lily that time is of the essence. I've worked on several different projects with Rich and over time being on the tree commission and we a bunch of times have just missed the opportunity to interrupt, um, to make changes and waiting till it's actually 25% um, I don't think it's a great idea. So I do think if we're gonna um, make a recommendation, then we need to act soon. Just unmute yourself. Thank you. I didn't think I could. Um, as far as process, um, are we allowed to vote on this now at this meeting? Or do we have to put it on the agenda as a vote for the next meeting? Uh, so I would think that you could, be, you could, anyone could make a motion to vote on you know, drafting a letter. I mean, someone is gonna have to draft a letter between now and our next meeting. So we have an opportunity to discuss the letter um, in, in, the public, uh, in a public meeting. So if someone wants to make a motion, if you're ready to make a motion to, to, uh, to support, you know, writing, a, uh, to make a motion in order to, to write a letter of supporting um, the uh, Main Street Design for Everyone concepts, then you're more than welcome to do so. Um, we don't have to take an official vote, I suppose, either. If someone wants to just draft a letter and send it to all of us so we can look at it and we can respond individually as well. But I think taking a formal position is probably a, an important first step, in my opinion. And I, too, am in favor of the recommended changes that the yeah. uh, design for everyone is brought forward, you know, especially the tree, especially the issues with the existing urban trees, which are going to really suffer like the trees suffered at Forbes Library. Yeah. I think sometimes that's a really hard pill for people to swallow because they just look at the present um, tree and they think of the present time frame they're in. But I mean, we're, we're all really not about, yes, we are about the present, but we're really thinking about the future in every uh, planting that we do across the city, regardless of what street it's on. So we have a chance to really sort of kind of open this right up and actually put tons and tons of CU soil in places where we wouldn't be able to do so because existing large trees would be there. So, um, so anyways, yeah, so, so we're looking for a volunteer to write a letter by, say, the 9th, that then we could vote to all endorse as a statement by the 16th, on the 16th, correct? That's correct, yes. I'll volunteer to do that. I can get that to everybody by next Wednesday, the 9th. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. Great. Um, Lily, could I may I ask a question? Thank you for all your work around this. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, looking at the map, even if the city took every recommendation and planted every tree, it's still rather meager in some ways in terms of I mean, because you can imagine that there there could be an understory and there could be, you know, annuals and perennials below that. Is there is there is there a model for an even more robust um, treescape downtown? I mean, I think that, you know, as far as 25% goes, 
you need to get to that to to ensure that you have the space for the trees, right? Because if if there is not a, like in front of local burger, if the curb cut goes so cl close to where it is now, there is no room for a tree. So your your immediate goal right now is to to where needed shrink that that curb to curb distance so you can get in the trees. Then once you get that, <laughs> and if we get our parallel parking over angle parking, and if we get you know, um, turn pockets as, as, as opposed to a continuous third middle lane, then we've gained a lot of space where, David, we can have those design detail conversations about other types of green infrastructure. But I think our goal right now is to shrink the street, is to shrink the asphalt, is to, is to bring those curbs in so we have sufficient room for trees. What about the idea of, um putting the power lines underground? Is that something that's in the plan? There's, there's, there's no power lines on Main Street. Oh, there aren't? No, They're no, already no, underground? The power lines are the, de the decorative light poles and that'll, whatever lighting they decide to do will all be underground. Oh, okay, good. So we can have tall trees there. Yeah. I mean, this it's, is such a golden opportunity, folks. It'll be transformative. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, this will be giving a gift to the future like nothing we've ever given. I mean. Just just one other quick um, comment about the about the like massive amounts of CU soil. The most effective way that it's being used is curb to building. And um, one other piece of plugging information there is you will not have sidewalk heaving. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, there will not be sidewalk heaving. Mm -hmm. They've done it all over Ithaca, New York. Nice. I, I didn't so, hear sidewalk. There will not be sidewalk heaving. There won't be it. Oh, right. like, of the, there just won't. Where if you put a little strip in yeah. of CU soil, eventually you will have sidewalk heaving and all the maintenance and the uh, lawsuits that end up for that. So, right. I mean, this a little be, piece. Yeah. And that's actually really important, Jen, because I think we will get some pushback from people over taking down probably all the trees, but the, you make a very good argument about how you can't do it piecemeal. Because if you do, then you're going to have those kind of, um, you know, uh, unintended consequences. And by the way, in, in res respect to that, I have crafted a letter to the Gazette, which I'm just holding on to. I don't plan on actually sending it until after we get past the curb to curb conversation, where, where I introduce the concept of having to take down all of the current trees. And that being uh, okay, uh, so just so you know, I'm, I'm trying to get in front of that messaging um, potential disaster. And, um, and I think that if we, if, we, um, if we do get in front of it and we really stand unified about how this is such an opportunity to, to recreate a whole new street edge, that people will make peace with it. I, I really do believe that. At least most sane people will make peace with it. And any of those trees that will be removed, if, if any or all of them, can they be replanted? I'll let Rich answer that one. Possibly some of the smaller ones, but the majority of the, the varying ages of trees, so I would say probably not. You know, I mean, those trees have been there since the last time North downtown was uh, done over, which was in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm. And they're really only growing in that little four, four by four or five by five space. Um, you know, I went to look at a bald cypress today that I planted like 18 years ago and the thing it died because I think it has a girdled root. Part of the reason the girdled root is because it has no rooting space any longer. So it just circles in its own soil constantly. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard. I mean, Forbes Library just kind of sticks in my head because of the amount of construction damage that was done there. Although Forbes was a little different because there was no tree protection and no air spading or anything, any kind of uh, mitigation for the construction damage. But it's really difficult to actually put CU soil around a very large tree that has, you've just cut all of its roots to do the construction and excavation on. It's really very difficult um, because that tree just cannot reproduce that biomass in enough time to support its whole um, core biomass system. So, but anyways, I, we're way over time. So I move that we um, ask Marilyn to write the letter. I second that we, Ask Marilyn to write the letter. Okay, any discussion? No discussion. Deb, will you take a roll call, please? 
Gladly. Rich? Yes. Susan? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. <laughs> Molly? Yes. Jen? Yes. Rob? Yes. And David? Yes. I think I missed anybody. Thank you all. So appreciate it. Thank you, Lily. Looking forward to reading the letter. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck Thank in you. all the great work Thank you're you. doing. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item is Arbor Day week wrap up and spring planting update. Uh, Sue, do you want to lead us in on this one to talk about? Okay. Um, well, we um, gave away all of the 500 trees this year. There was tremendous enthusiasm. Um, boy, it seems like forever ago, um, but we had two days out, very windy. Um, and that all went really well. Thank you to everyone who helped bag them up. We bagged up all 500 trees in one evening. Thanks, um, a huge thanks to Rich for writing out all those logistical details. So everybody knew what everybody else was doing and it was really tremendous. And I should turn it over to um, Rich and Rob who were site managers. We, we did more than we've ever done on Arbor Day. We had two big sites um, on the Saturday. We had a big crew from UMass Urban Forestry Department um, going on. At the same time, there was the neighborhood planting over on South Street. So it was a lot. So, all, so the tree giveaway was great totally successful and we'll move over to Richard and Rob. Rob, you wanna yep. uh, jump in? So, yeah, we had re received in the middle of all this um, about 60 bare root trees and planted them during Arbor Day. So we, it was an unusual Arbor Day because we had the giveaways and the tree planting and a project on South Street all happening at the same time. Um, it was a bit of a stretch, but <laughs> because we did manage in that very short time to plant a little over 130 trees. And I, and I wanted to just, I, this may not be directly about Arbor Day, but that was uh, we pretty much near the end of our planting because the weather then turned very hot and um, that pretty much began to and our ability. And I, I'd like time to go into what we, the transition due to the hot weather after Rich has spoken. Yeah, I don't, I don't have much more to add. Although, I mean, I have to say for logistically, it was a really challenging week, but we were able to pull it all off. Um, I don't really even know how we did it. We just did it. And yeah, it was, it was a lot to do all at once. And, and yeah. so what happened though, is that uh, a week or two, uh, very quick, quickly after a cold Arbor Day period, the weather turned very hot and the DPW had to focus on getting water bags out early. They, you know, May water bags for tree, supporting trees and the heat made it so we couldn't plant anymore. So I just want everyone to know that we terminated tree planting in the middle of May, which is really unusual and unfortunate. And that even we, the tree Northampton has then refocused itself instead of planting on tree care. So we're out putting um, uh, weeding and mulching, hopefully about 600 trees. We've gotten through 180 trees so far. Um, it's a big job. You gotta bend down and weed and then you gotta put out the mulch. We're doing this partly because we're afraid the weather is so harsh that we're gonna end up with another period of drought and the trees will die um, when when working out there, even with the rain we've had, just under the surface often you find powdery soil. So in the, Rich mentioned that bald cypress that died. I, I, I'm, I, it may have also been affected by three previous, sum, two previous summers of extreme heat, then this unusual weather now. Um, and we actually have more mortality than we have had um, over the years this, mm -hmm. this year. And that, I, from you know, unscientific point of view, the same, some of the same trees that are dying are ones that were stressed over the last two years. Mm -hmm. They often lost their leaves uh, early and were um, in drought conditions, partly because the DPW 
uh, only had one truck on the road sometimes and weren't able to keep up with the watering. This year, the DPW, I think, Rich can correct me if I'm wrong, really might be able to get two trucks on the road um, for much of the summer. And hopefully between the mulching and the two trucks on the road, uh, we're gonna stop this mortality. I'll add in, um, there was kind of on a bright note though, um, there's a big amount of work that got done that is has been kind of quiet and might go unnoticed, but several years ago we had planted trees along King Street. And um, with the road work about to go in, um, Rich worked with volunteers and they actually dug up those trees. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I heard, those trees had big roots in just a few years in a tremendously inhospitable place on King Street. And they were apparently, it was really hard to dig them up, but those trees were saved. They were moved to industrial drive and fingers crossed, mm -hmm. um, they'll grow some more big roots. But yeah, um, that was quite there. a feat, right I around thought, Arbor Day. Wow. That also happened. Also around Arbor Day. I helped organize the digging. And when I went to investigate, I, I saw little fibrous roots around them. And I thought that's what there was. You know, was that, that when we came to pick them up, that we just dig through these fibrous roots and take them away. Well, I didn't dig deep enough because they're what Rich calls anchor roots. So they were going down and away from me. I didn't see them. And they were like inch, inch and a half thick. And they were molt, many of them. And they were, those trees were anchored. And they'd only been there two or three years. And it was, it was impressive. So uh, very impressive, the amount of roots on those things. They're, and, and it took us a huge amount of energy to dig them out. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I would do that again. It was, it was, uh, really <laughs> not worth the, the energy. It was really hard work. <laughs> yeah. But um, we had a really strong message during Arbor Day in our displays and in talking to the public about um, saying no to volcano mulching, letting mulch touch the trees. And um, Alicia and I got a nice article um, working with John Paradis in the Gazette. We really pounded that message and really talked about, you know, stuck with one message. Um, and I think that was pretty effective. I think we really raised a lot of awareness about yeah. volcano mulching and tree yeah. care. And now hopefully we're reinforcing it with these, you know, hundreds of trees were getting mulched. I like to say it's like a frame around the, a picture. Mm -hmm. They look so wonderful and it really communicates that we care, our town cares about our trees, our volunteers, and that people should care about trees. So I feel proud that we've stuck to our message and really, I think may have made a difference raising awareness by doing that thing and then following up with, with behavior that shows people how nice they look. Thank you, Sue. I think that that's a good frame for what I did this morning, which is be crawling around on my knees on Bridge Street. <laughs> <laughs> I out Saturday it was wonderful it was really right. wonderful and, um, and one point. more thing about Arbor Day the wind events had an impact on the DPW during that busy time as well mm. right um one question about Arbor Day were all the was everything given away were all the whips given away wow yes. first time first time ever everything wow came. Great. Tree Northampton had ordered 40 whips or 40 liners, I guess they're called, medium size. And a crew, volunteer crews bagged all those in big bags. We had a we had a compost delivery. So a lot went on in that if you combine Tree Northampton's work in their nursery, it's 600 tree arbor day because 500 whips. And then how many were planted? I was counting 67 plus the 40, but it sounds like it's even more than 600. Yeah. It was exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, we're, not gonna, saying, we're not gonna do it again in that way. We're gonna spread it out by starting earlier because that was crazy. Sorry, Molly, go ahead. Sue, so, so are you saying that you, you took some of the whips, that Tree Northampton took some of the whips? No, 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 no. 
Tree Northampton invested separately with private funding. Oh. 40 trees. So volunteers in the city with the city giving 500 and planting over 60 just in that one weekend. And then the 40 that Tree Northampton did privately, it's private citizens, that's like 600 wow. trees pass through volunteer hands. Wow. And actually in the middle of all that, Rich took delivery of another 170 trees that went to the nursery. So that was crazy too. So just so people know how much work got done Arbor Day and continues uh, to get, uh, get done. Thank you. Thank all you right, for, bravo. Thank you for all, all of your support and all the volunteers from Tree Northampton. And all the residents just came and helped and planted and people that actually picked up whips and just connections we made. It's just a great, yeah, I, I don't know if we can get the event any bigger. I, I think it's probably <laughs> like getting in trouble, but whatever. We'll, but we'll try, right? All we can do is try. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Okay, so I put a little time slot in there for subgroups. We're a little bit over that. Um, does anyone have anything they want to say about subgroup meetings? Did anyone nothing to report out. So if you're okay, I'm just gonna leave a, a slot on there, time slot for the next meeting. So if people meet between now and then, or if people want to meet as a subgroup, please email me and I'll set up everything so you can meet with an agenda and everything else and we'll go from there. I know this past month has been pretty busy for everyone. So I, you know, we'll, we'll get there, so. So Rich, what you're offering is that we would meet as a subgroup during one of the meetings, at, at the end of a meeting, or separately? So, so right now we're, we're on track to have an, a second uh, a second meeting this month. So I think on our, our next um, meeting, I will put on the agenda for us to discuss how we want to carry on going forward with at least the summer and meeting once or twice. And if we just want to meet once, do we want to utilize that other time block for a subgroup to meet or do, do other commission? So in other words, if... Uh, Collectively, we spend an hour and a half or three hours a month with each other on Zoom. Right. Do we want to spend an hour and a half of that at any other time with our subgroups that would work for everyone so we can report out to the full commission? So we can talk about that more in depth if you'd like at the next meeting to try to figure out how to make that happen. Yes, Sue. If I understand this correctly, what we need to do is we need to look at our goals spreadsheet yeah. and we need to see where we are identify the ones where we are the lead person on it mm -hmm. and then we need to come up with a plan for whatever we're supposed to be leading on and decide whether we want to have a wednesday zoom meeting or some other time and meet and get in touch with the other people and have a plan ready for the next meeting for how subgroups are going to meet this summer yeah. yep. Yep, I mean, and you again, you don't have to confine it to the time frame. You can make it any time frame that you want. You know, the other thing too is we're going to get more guidance about public meetings on Zoom versus in person. Um, hopefully, in the next week or so, maybe by the by the end of the month, I would imagine we'll probably utilize Zoom until at least the fall, where I think uh, Governor Baker filed legislation that allows us to meet remotely like this. People are also using a hybrid approach where like, let's say four commissioners decide they wanna meet in my office, the rest of the commissioners would be on Zoom if you wanted, to, because that is a possibility that's already allowed under mass general law. The open meeting law is to have someone dial in from a phone or meet remotely. That's been around for a long time. So that's, I don't have any more information on that, but yes, Sue, that's general gist of it. Um, so if people wanna meet and you wanna meet as a group, um, two or three of three of you, then we have to post it as a public meeting. So I just need to know when, where, so I can make an agenda and figure out how to get you all together. So with no reports, then I think folks can communicate amongst themselves. Um, just be careful not to reply all. And then someone can communicate with me, the leader, of the, uh, the lead person of the group, and then we can go from there. Uh, and we'll look forward to having an email. Um, from Kaylee so that we can connect with her and find out how each of us can. Yes, can well, we're very excited that Kaylee is going to make us a calendar so she can keep track of all of us, which is really important because we can't keep track of ourselves. So, <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right. A any other any other questions about subgroup or any of that nature? No. Okay. So I will put that on the next meeting agenda. Okay, Molly. Um, um, seeing what time it is, five fifty four. Yes. Um, I'm very happy to just put my thing off again till the next meeting because it's not crucial. It's just a uh, what I have is a few slides about the spotted lanternfly and um, information about it okay. and a, a small proposal. But that yeah. can um, it can wait. What I'll do is I'll in the next meeting I'll just I'll give you more than five minutes. I didn't realize you had the slides. I'll give you you know whatever you tell me what you need you think for time because I also wanted to know if you were wanted to have Greg Beck come and give us a presentation on biochar at our next meeting. Ah, yeah. Which, uh, he can tailor that to really a, a, a 20 minute time frame, 20 minute presentation. Well, why don't you give me 10 minutes for the next meeting then? Okay, very good. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, all right, so I have the to-do list on there, but we haven't done the to-do list in a long time. So that's another topic of conversation. Um, and that's just holdover from when, when you, um, from last year, because I don't think we've actually updated the to-do list at all. We've just kind of given ourselves tasks and we've accomplished them as we've been going along. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's something that uh, we should discuss it further or do we want to just not have the to-do list? I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I have so many lists going, I can't keep track of what list is what these days, but um, you know, that uh, the other thing too is that um, sort of the to-do list, I think now is sort of like our subgroup um, goals and objectives in essence also. Right. You know, I mean, those are, those are not as dialed in as some of the to-do list items that we've had. But I mean, like for example, Marilyn has offered to, to draft a letter for us, right? That would be a to-do list item. But it's we're not calling it out as a to-do list item. So I, I don't know if you wanna have a further discussion about how you wanna manage that um, at our next meeting as well. Anybody have any thoughts, Marilyn? Well, personally, I, I am in favor of a to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly times when we might not get to our to-do list or all the items on it, but it's sort of sort of a statement that we make to one another and sort of a, an official record of what we're working on. Um, so I kind of like how we how we adapted it most recently, just sort of adding those items to the end of the meeting notes or the minutes. Um, because then when we review the minutes at our next meeting, you know, it's just, it kind of, I think it helps keep moving, move things forward. And then we can see what one another is doing that th those are my thoughts. I welcome others. So similar to, uh, let me just look at our minutes because we don't have, so our to-do list used to be on, Deb, for your information, when Beth, when Beth Willard did the minutes, um, we used to keep a rolling to-do list that was on the back of the minutes, minutes, I think, or the agenda, one of the two, I can't, I think it was the minutes. It was, uh, so every time someone had an item for a to-do list at the end of the meeting, it was added to the, the whole uh, list. I don't know where, how and where Beth Willard kept that, but I can find that out so we can pull that back out and take a look at it and maybe, maybe clean it up a little bit. Um, also, I don't know if, we could actually kind of tie in a to-do list with the calendar that hopefully Kaylee's going to put together for us too, which might be helpful just to remind us to give us deadlines to get things accomplished as well. So I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts, but I'll at least get the to-do list pulled back out that we had from the last time it was posted on the minutes. One other thing that might be helpful if we, if we agree is there, there was a time, I know this was when Todd was on the commission, on the back of every agenda, we had our, our agreed upon um, commission plan. I don't have a version of it handy with me. Do other folks recall that? 
I could pull one out of my filing cabinet. I thought here. that was the planting plan that Molly can, has been working on where she puts the data of what we've planted, where we've planted, um, that sort of thing all in one place. I think I think what Marilyn what Marilyn's talking about is uh, Marilyn, we used to, we used to have a so we have the group agreement that we all have that I need, I need to get posted on the on the website the one that we agreed upon how our, how we run our how we run our commission and then we had um, when Todd was on when Todd was the vice chair we had I think like and I think it was sort of like a to do list that was on. The agenda for tasks, individual tasks. Now we oh. we created the goals and objective list, which really is sort of the task for this calendar year. So the mm -hmm. question is, do we want that? You know, what what do we want to? What do we want to have? Well, yeah, Marilyn, I, oh. I can't. I can't Shit, closer, put it closer. Yeah. Really he close. Called it, he called it the plan of the plan. Because I was on that committee. Oh, planting, planting plan oh, outline. Planting but plan. it was like the plan of the plan. So we would have to like update it. And it was kind of like who was responsible for what, because there was a lot of confusion. This was when Tree Northampton was emerging and we didn't know who was, you know, kind of in charge of what kind of. I, I think that's more where it like, yeah, I think it was. Hmm. I'm not saying we have to reinstate it, but I was going through a bunch of my tree commission stuff recently and I came across, I, I, it reminded me that we used to have this on the back, just sort of as a reminder, whether we want to update it or not include it anymore, but it was kind of helpful because it was always handy. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I will, I'll pull out the to-do list and get that to Deb so we can have that for our next meeting. And then, um, Marilyn, if you can you, if you have, do you scan that and send that to me in a PDF or something, or send it to all of us just so you can look at it, just to refresh our memories. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you. And then, um, if you want to have an agenda item on the next meeting to talk about this, you got to let me know. I'm fine with it. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to overload us either because we're going to have a presentation from Greg. Plus, we're going to have a discussion about um, the letter for the um, Main Street redesign. And then I want to give Molly enough time to give her presentation. And then I want to also have time to discuss how you want to meet going forward. So I, those items might take up quite a bit of our hour and a half. And we'll have Kaylee with an update, too. Yes. Sorry. Yes, we'll have Kaylee with an update. If I remember to call you tomorrow, which I will, I promise. <laughs> So if anyone, I mean, that's just my uh, thoughts at the moment. Anyone else have any thoughts? It's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot for an agenda. I also have to get going pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. We're at 602. I, I understand that. So does anybody have any other business not anticipated by the chair? Any announcements of any kind? None. Okay. Barring none. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Great. I'll second it. All right. I second. Is there any that discussion? Was Jen. There is no discussion. Okay. And just raise your hands if you're all in favor. Okay. We'll Perfect, guys. See you next weekend. Another week. Wait, what are, so when are we meeting? Uh, 16th. 16th. Oh, okay. 16th. Okay. Yeah. Not the Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks. And thanks, Deborah, for to doing.